We gather in the name of the triune God, love's source, love incarnate, and love's power. Let us join together in the call to worship this morning. If God is a hen, God's wing. If God is a table, we each have a seat. If God is a house, we are safe from the storm. If God is a party, we are invited to dance. If God is a melody, our names are the lyrics. If this is Christ Church, then all are welcomed, all are loved, all belong. Let us worship God together. Let us join together in our first hymn, and everyone can sing, um, Dear Mother God. And it is not in our hymnal, so you can just follow along on the screens. Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Welcome to all of you to this service of worship today. Welcome to those in person, to those who are live streaming, to those listening in on CKWR radio. It's good for us to be together today. I'd like to acknowledge that uh, Knox rests on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the neutral peoples. It is a privilege for us to be able to worship and work on this land. Our prayer has already begun. I'd like to pray using some words.
the God of great abundance. We are grateful that you receive us with open arms whenever we turn to you. Skillfully, through the gentle power of your spirit and with, with great tenderness, you find the places where we hurt and you shine on them with healing light. You know the places and times when we run from you and you call us home. You touch our eyes with grace and expand our vision of who you are and who we can become. Continue to mold us, shape us, and nourish us so that your church may be strengthened for the work of ministry, we pray. In the spirit of Christ, we pray these prayers. The one who taught the disciples to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Family of faith, we now turn to a time of confession. We don't do this to wallow in guilt. That's not what confession is. Confession is a time of honesty with ourselves and with God. So in a desire for growth and transformation and inner change, we pray to the God who loves us like a mother hen loves her chicks. We join together in prayer. When the Pharisees tried to stop Jesus, Jesus said, I will, I will keep, keep on. I will, I will keep, keep on healing. I will keep on teaching. I will keep on preaching. I will, I will keep, keep on flipping, flipping the tables of injustice. I will keep on treating every person like a child of God. I will keep on believing that this world can change. I will keep on and keep on and keep on until God's promised day. Forgive us, God, for the times when we stop. Amen. We extinguish the second of our Lenten candles. I've got good news for you today because Jesus love just keeps going and going and going we can trust that we are immersed enveloped in and by this grace we rest in this good news no matter what we do wrong no matter what we forget to do we are under God's wing we are loved we are held we are forgiven we are freed Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. King Herod was not happy 
with some of the things that Jesus was saying as he was teaching all around Judea. Some people came to warn Jesus, telling him, get away from Jerusalem. Don't you know Herod wants to kill you? But Jesus was determined. He told them, Herod is like a fox, and I am like a mother hen, trying to protect the people of Jerusalem like a flock of chicks. How I want all my baby chicks to be safe under my wings. Can you just picture the love of Jesus trying to embrace all the people of Jerusalem. How I want my chicks to be safe under my wings. But time after time, they run away and turn from the very people that God sends to protect them. Still, like a mother hen, I will not stop loving my flock. Sometimes when I think about God, it is helpful for me to consider all the various images of God that I can relate to, like animals that God could be like. In the Bible, God is referred to in so many different ways. God is referred to as an eagle, as living water, as rock, as a mother hen, and a lion. And there are so many different references or images that the Bible uses to describe God. I really like the image presented in the story from today of the mother hen. Mother hens are, have soft, soft feathers on their wings. And under their wings, there are spaces for the chicks to gather. If you look really closely at the image on the screen, you'll see a little chick's head peeking out from underneath the wings. And I wonder, who makes you feel safe like that? Maybe a place that makes you feel like home or a person. I know that I feel safe when I'm gathered in a church sanctuary because that's a place that's been like home to me since I was a little girl. I also feel safe when I'm in the presence of my partner. He makes me feel really safe. And I hope that each of us has a safe place. I would like to share a story with you. This is a story that I grew up with and a story that I have read to my children since they were little. It's a story you might know called The Runaway Bunny. And there is something really neat about this story. No matter where the little bunny in the story goes, the little bunny wants to get away from its mom and do his own thing and be more independent. But you know what? The mom keeps following him wherever he goes to make sure that he's protected and safe. And it reminds me a lot of God that God transforms and goes to so many places to be in our presence that we can't escape it. Once there was a little bunny who wanted to run away. So he said to his mother, I am running away. If you run away, said his mother, I will run after you, for you are my little bunny. If you run after me, said the little bunny, I will become a fish in a trout stream and I will swim away from you. If you become a fish in a 
trout stream, said his mother. I will become a fisher person and I will fish for you. If you become a fisher person, said the little bunny, I will become a rock on the mountain high above you. If you become a rock on the mountain high above me, said his mother, I will be a mountain climber and I will climb to where you are. If you become a mountain climber, said the little bunny, I will be a crocus in a hidden garden. If you become a crocus in a hidden garden, said his mother, I will be a gardener and I will find you. If you look really closely, you can see the little bunny peeking out from one of the crocuses in the garden. If you are a gardener and find me, said the little bunny, I will be a bird and fly away from you. If you become a bird and fly away from me, said his mother, I will be a tree that you can come home to. If you become a tree, said the little bunny, I will become a sailboat and I will sail away from you. If you become a sailboat and sail away from me, said his mother, I will become the wind and blow you where I want you to go. I love how the bunny's ears become the sails. If you become the wind and blow me, said the little bunny, I will join a circus and fly away on a flying trapeze. If you go flying on a flying trapeze, said his mother, I will be a tightrope walker and I will walk across the air to you. If you become a tightrope walker and I walk across the air to you, said the bunny, I will become a little boy and I will run into a house. If you become a little boy and run into a house, said the mother bunny, I will become your mother and catch you in my arms and hug you. Shucks, said the bunny, I might just as well stay here where I am and be your little bunny. And so he did. Have a carrot, said the mother bunny. I think that God and Jesus must feel a lot like the mother bunny in this story. Sometimes we are like the little bunny and we run off and we want to do our own things, but God comes close to us wherever we are. And sometimes we realize that no matter how far we go, we can't escape God's love and we might as well just rest in that protective care. The Sunday school children this week thought about if God was like an animal, what animal would God be like and why? So they're going to share some of their answers with us now. If God was an animal, I, I think he would be a bird because... And he's in the sky always, and he's also watching over us. What would God be if you were an animal? A cat! Say cat. A cat! What animal is God like, and why? He is like a dove. 
because it is a symbol. It is a symbol of peace, and it's sometimes used as a messenger bird. What animal do you want to pick? A a millipede. A millipede. Um, a centipede. If God were an animal, I think he would be a tiger because they are very protective. It will be a koala because koalas have pouches and for their babies and they keep them safe and warm. If God were an animal, I think he'd be a dog because he's loving, forgiveful, and he never holds anger. I think God is like a wolf because God takes care of everybody in his pack just like a wolf take, takes care of everybody in their pack. Let us pray as, as we think about all these images of God and go into our week. Dear God, thank you for being our mother hen our safe space where we are loved and protected even when we want, run away from you. Remind us that we always have a home in your love. Amen. I will never let go of what
for illumination. Abundant God, this life of ours is full to the brim. Our days are overflowing with emails and to-do lists, schedules and notifications, assignments and deadlines. We wake up feeling behind, we go to sleep worrying about tomorrow, and we know there has to be more than this. So we pray, bend down and show us the way. Leave breadcrumbs in the street, Point us towards awe and wonder. Guide us to intimacy and trust. Gift us with laughter that will make us cry and hope that will make us feel alive. We want a new kind of full to the brim. Show us the way. We are listening for your cues. And gratefully we pray, amen. Our poetry reading is from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witness has risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when, the, when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the witness of the early church. Thanks be to God.
Today we hear the story of Jesus' lament over Jerusalem, the supposed city of peace that in reality is anything but peaceful. The city Jesus has a love-hate relationship with, the city he sheds many tears of love, grief, and disappointment over, the city he gives his life out of love for. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I considered to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. You can almost see his head shake, almost hear the sadness in his voice. How I long to embrace you, comfort you, protect you, and keep you safe. The lament of Jesus is unrequited, though. Jerusalem is unwilling to follow the way of Jesus' love. Jerusalem is not alone in this regard. All people from all cultures in all times find ways to reject the fullness of what God desires to give. There is a church that sits on the Mount of Olives, up on the slope where Jesus stood and wept over Jerusalem. Its floor plan is tear-shaped, and its name, Dominus Flevit Church means the Lord wept. On the altar, there is this beautiful mosaic that you see on the screen of Jesus as the mother hen, wings outstretched and breast exposed. You may wonder why Jesus chose a hen as an image of his protective care and not the mighty eagle of Exodus or the lion of Judah. However, a brooding chicken is a formidable foe, an animal inspiring fear and respect amidst opponents. If you've ever seen a brood of chickens under attack, the hen sounds the threat alarm and all the other chickens know to gather together in one place under the same cover. The shrill sound doesn't stop until they are all back together. For chickens, there's something about the lack of safety until everyone is in. Jesus teaches us the importance of community, of acting as one together, of an open love that welcomes all into an embrace. The image of Jesus as hen is also one that lays bare the vulnerability of God. When you are a mother hen, all you can do is open your wings wide and gather as many chicks as you can. But you cannot make the chicks come regardless of how open the invitation If you have ever loved someone you could not protect, then you understand the depth of Jesus' lament. All you can do is open your arms. You cannot make anyone walk in to them. Meanwhile, this is the most vulnerable posture in the world. Wings spread out, breast exposed. But if you mean what you say, 
this is how you stand. In her book, Braving the Wilderness, Brene Brown, vulnerability expert, writes a chapter on having a strong back, a soft front, and a wild heart. The mark of a wild heart is living out the paradox of love in our lives. It's the ability to be tough and tender, excited and scared, brave and afraid, all at the same time. It's showing up in our vulnerability and our courage, being both fierce and kind. A wild heart can also straddle the tension of staying awake to the struggles in the world and fighting for justice and peace while also cultivating its own moments of joy. This is a good reminder that when life gets tough, the most important thing we can do is remain calm, centered, and authentic so that we remain strong enough to stay in a space where we still belong to God. Even if the outside world wants to challenge, reject, or hurt us. When we have a soft front that exposes our wild heart, we can really love as Jesus loved. Think of his position on the cross. Arms outstretched, chest exposed, heart exposed, and the love pouring out into the world. When you love as Jesus loved, this is how you stand. Jesus is a mother hen who stands between the chicks and those who mean to do them harm. She has no fangs, no claws, no bulging muscles. All she has is her willingness to shield her babies with her own body. If the fox wants the chicks, he will have to kill her first. When faced with injustice, oppression, and destruction around us, how do we react? Do we join the foxes, the Herods of the world, or do we allow ourselves to be sheltered by God's love? And do we offer that shelter to others? All around us, the world is in turmoil. There is war and injustice, it seems, at every turn. There are foxes seeking to rule in places all over the world. Foxes that are acting out of greed and fear, out of hunger for power and hoarding of resources. If you look hard enough, though... There are mother hens gathering chicks in, vulnerably exposing their wild hearts in order to show their fierce love. Ukrainian and Polish mothers know this kind of fierce love in their hearts and in their bodies. More than a million Ukrainian refugees have now poured into neighboring Poland, most of them women and children. When Polish mothers learned that these women and children were coming, they went to the railway stations and border crossings where the refugees were arriving and they began dropping off baby strollers. A photojournalist covering the conflict snapped this photo of seven empty strollers waiting at the Prezet Missile Glauny station. 
in other images at other stations, the strollers are filled with blankets and baby necessities. The strollers on the train platforms in Poland are a symbol of what women know about war and their place in it. These Ukrainian mothers have arrived without their husbands or partners because the men of Ukraine, 18 to 60, are prohibited from leaving. The men are staying to fight in the army. Women in war have been forced to flee or to hide and they have been raped. Their bodies have become territories on which battles are fought. They have been their family protectors. They have been charged with keeping children safe using only their bodies as armor. They are the mother hen. The strollers on the train platforms in Poland are the artifacts of war that we do not talk about. Yet strollers are not negotiated in the language of sanctions and artillery. In Kiev, a maternity ward moved its pregnant patients to an underground bunker. There, soon-to-be mothers labored in darkened hallways as the city above them exploded. In a Kharkiv hospital, new mothers rocked their infants in a room where mattresses were piled up against the windows as protection from shrapnel. If you look hard enough, though, there are mother hens gathering chicks in, vulnerably exposing their wild hearts in order to show their fierce love. Jesus does not hesitate to refer to himself with a female metaphor because for him it fits the scene. Mystics throughout history such as Julian of Norwich have described the femininity of Holy Mother Jesus when she wrote, Christ is our mother, brother, and savior, our natural mother, our gracious mother, because he willed to become our mother in everything, took the ground for his work most humbly and most mildly in the maiden's womb. A mother can give her child milk to suck, But our precious mother, Jesus, can feed us with himself. The image of Jesus as a mother hen is uncomfortable for many of us. Like Jerusalem, many of us refuse to be mothered by Jesus. It is hard for us to accept a Jesus who challenges our notions of gender and sexuality. Jesus' very life and choices go against the cultural norms of his time. Being an unmarried Jewish man was a scandal. And being a man without children was pitiable. Jesus offers a masculinity and a divinity that does not follow patriarchal norms. Many would have rejected Jesus' preaching and would have chosen to be unmothered by God than to embrace God of Christ as their mother. In this passage from Luke, we are met with the reality that God is so far beyond gender that throughout scripture, God has a womb, birthed the sea, and fathered the rain. Christ does not give God male, the scripture, sorry, does not give God male body parts. 
No one gender can contain God. God is trans, transgressive, transgender, transcontinental, transnational, transreligious. God's love transverses and encompasses all things. God violates accepted and imposed boundaries, especially those of social acceptability. There are foxes in power all over the world trying to place boundaries on love. Consider what is going on in the states of Texas and Florida right now. This March in Texas, anti-trans policies are being imposed. Political leaders are uncomfortable with trans children and are trying to impose laws placing boundaries on people who don't fit our human-imposed gender norms. Ken Paxton, the Attorney General of Texas, had issued a non-binding legal opinion classifying gender-affirming medical care for trans children as child abuse. A few hours later, Governor Greg Abbott published an order reinforcing Paxton's statement, noting that doctors, nurses, teachers, and members of the public who fail to report such abuse to authorities may be subject to criminal penalties. These policies are part of a broader nationwide wave of legislation targeting trans people and particularly trans children. Last fall, Texas became the latest state to restrict trans students participating in school sports while state legislators proposed dozens of other anti-trans bills that didn't pass. Families are trying to support their children with unconditional love to be themselves and are standing up and speaking out, trying to fight for the rights of their children. Marginalizing LGBTQ plus people, the Florida Senate has passed a bill nicknamed Don't Say Gay. A bill that would forbid instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity to young children in the Florida school system. On Tuesday, shortly after the measure passed in the Florida State House, U.S. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona issued a statement that read, Leaders in Florida are prioritizing hateful bills that hurt some of the students most in need. The Department of Education has made clear that all schools receiving federal funding must follow federal civil rights law, including protections against discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. We stand with our LGBTQ plus students in Florida and across the country he says, and urge Florida leaders to make sure that all students are protected and supported. God's transverse love invites us to protect these vulnerable children, allowing them to be themselves. We, like Jesus, must resist being put behind the lines, silent when we know there are lives at stake. We must speak and act. We have work to do. There are people who need to be loved, to be protected, and lives that need to be healed and transformed. Our calling is to be the love that crosses all boundaries, 
put in place by the foxes of the world. We are reminded through scripture that we are encircled by God's presence and love. It's not always easy, however, to stay present to that reality, especially in our deeply aching world and in the wilderness of Lent. Nancy Matthews, a dedicated member of the Knox Waterloo community, shared a beautiful email with me this week from the Iona community. I invite us now to participate in the Celtic practice of an encircling prayer, also known as a came, which is a Gaelic word for protection and sanctuary, which speak to the imagery in Psalm 27 and of the mother hen. For a moment, imagine drawing a circle around yourself or others, around a trans child, around Ukraine, around the world. Embody the prayer and let it help us yield to the mystery of our connection with God. Pause and sense God's encircling love for you. Let us pray. Circle me, Lord. Keep protection near and danger afar. Circle me, Lord. Keep light near and darkness afar. Circle me, Lord. Keep peace within and keep evil out. Amen. Let us join together in our Next hymn, Christ of the Sad Face. feeling much gratitude in this moment for a a rich exploration of some beautiful metaphors for God and who we are called to be as 
called to become <laughs> as uh, children, as people of, uh, of a loving God. Amen. Thank you. And for the music, MC and Sophie, for, we look forward to hearing from you in a moment. Thank you for your gifts today. Our faithful crew at the back, for Joe and Kathleen and Grant and those who um, have greeted us and uh, seated us today. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, for tuning in on radio and on live stream. This service of worship is so much richer because of your presence and participation. Thank you. Uh, today's radio broadcast is uh, sponsored by friends in loving memory of, of Jean Marjorie Schantz, who died a year ago, but whose legacy is rich and remains. Thank you for that support. Uh, Coffee Connect is happening. We had a bit of technical difficulty last week. Some of you who wanted to join in the chit chat, which happens 10 minutes after the benediction, couldn't because of some link issues. We hope we figure that out. If you go to the Thursday emailing, which was sent out this week at Knox, uh, the link was reinserted in a way we hope, which will make the coffee room more accessible for everyone. And that'll stay open until around noon. So it gives you time to hustle on home safely and join in the coffee time if you wish. Lenten conversations are happening. We started our first Wednesday evening Lenten conversation last Wednesday. It was a great, great, meaningful evening. Register online. Uh, Wednesday at Knox is happening this week, a special celebration this week um, as we uh, approach uh, St. Patty's Day. This will be a celebration um, in memory of Stephen Todd, and uh, you can register online. Call the office if you need any help registering for any of these things. The reason why we ask people to register is so we know to send you the link to join in. That's the only reason. And the Sunday School uh, Friendship Soup Youth Fundraiser is happening. Uh, each year, the Sunday School Challenge uh, is, is a, an event that we enjoy, and this year, uh, the money goes to support emergency relief in Ukraine. Uh, and we are grateful for, for the Sunday School for putting this together. Um, Pre-orders will be taken until the 27th of this month. And you can email Carol or the office for more information. And you can also find details on Facebook and Instagram pages if you happen to be into social media. Thank you for your support. Connecting Together is happening a week from now. Uh, looks like it would be a great night on uh, quilts and stories of generations. So you can, you can join in. Everyone is welcome to join in in that. And Food for Thought is happening tonight. Um, yours truly is actually the guest for tonight. So I'm going to be sharing with some of the young people, young, young men and women in our, um, in our midst, um, some of the books that have been part of my own faith journey. So you can join in. I was asked to say that today. So <laughs> um, Last week we had our annual general meeting and we uh, approved the budget for, uh, for this coming year. Um, oh no, we're not going to talk budget yet. We want to talk futures first. So uh, a video was shown at this general, me general meeting last week. About 40 people, 45 people attended the meeting. So there's lots of folks who haven't seen this video yet. Uh, the Futures Committee on behalf of Session has been doing some work. We did some work in the fall, a series of consultations regarding where we're going to move, uh, where does Knox going to go down the road. And so this, this presentation was assembled to help um, provide you with some context of where the Futures work is at and where we're going to go. In the fall of 2021, the session of Knox asked you, the congregation, how we can move faithfully into the future together. Around 90 people met in small groups and talked about how you experienced the pandemic, what you learned about yourself and others from these experiences, the value of your church community, how you'd like to see Knox reach out to our community and to the world. A special thanks to those who participated. Consistent themes were expressed from across the groups that met. Each theme related to connecting, something we've been missing. 
You all told us about the creative ways that you've connected through caring. Meals, phone calls, cards, and virtual groups like Connecting Together. Others told us how you valued connecting through learning. These have been days of growth for many as we've learned about climate change, inclusion, and residential schools through partnerships in and through our Knox regional and denominational communities. We also heard that you're ready to get out into the community and connect by doing. We saw this in action with Karen Kitchen. We've had so many volunteers already. There are so many great things that you have been involved in within our community, such as food for a better tent city and supporting local food security initiatives. We also heard that we can and need to do more. We hear you. Some things we can do right away, and we'll be putting out a call for volunteers. Want to help with an idea? We'd love to have you. We also know other ideas will take more time, so groups will be formed to develop more deeply. These themes of caring, learning, and doing other themes that emerge through further consultation and study help us brainstorm or get involved in the theme and stage that interests you. Take a look at this image, which expresses a direction for Knox. A tree representing new life and growth is a fitting symbol. You can see the three areas of caring, learning, and doing, and how they all overlap. In the overlap, we see the connection that is so vital. As you reflect on this image, notice the trunk of this tree, which acts as a support to the three areas of growth. You will see the words, communication, people, and technology. These are key elements in our future of Knox, which will support and empower our caring, learning, and doing. The roots of the tree remind us that all we do is rooted in our Christian faith and grounded in God's love for all. May the Spirit guide us as we move together into this hopeful future. You will receive a more detailed summary of the outcomes of the Futures Focus Groups in an upcoming This Week at Knox emailing. If you do not receive This Week at Knox, just call the church office and we'll get you a summary. Thank you all. We're excited about what's next and the part you will play. Thank you. Now I can talk about the budget. Last week the budget was approved. Uh, it's an ambitious budget for 2022. Uh, we don't have the government subsidies anymore to help, help, uh, help us make ends meet. And so it's a budget that relies on the, uh, the generosity, tremendous generosity of the Knox community. There are many, many different ways you can give. And uh, we encourage you to, uh, to uh, in a spirit of joy, give gifts so that the ministries of Christ as those ministries live through the Knox community can continue to touch lives in meaningful ways.
don't deserve. Please be seated. Sometimes when I think about the pain of the world, I, uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, this feeling of over, overwhelmed comes over me. And uh, I had a prayer written for today, but sometimes I think there's just so many words we have and use in our tradition. Sometimes we don't leave enough room for silence. And that's hard to do when we have a radio crowd. But the radio broadcast has ended. <laughs> and I'm going to invite you to just open your hearts to God in a time of silence as an act of prayer. Prayer doesn't have to be about words. Prayer can just be feeling something or looking at something. Prayer can just be, it can be something that we taste. It can be something that we touch. We pray in so many ways. Uh, I'd like to invite us to pray uh, in silence. And I invite you just to open your hearts to God. That's one of the things that prayer is. It's just opening our hearts. Not, not asking for anything, just saying, God, bah, this is where I am right now. That's a kind of prayer. So I invite you in a time of silence to just open your hearts. We pray together. God who hovers over us like a hen over her chicks. We offer to you these prayers, some which we can articulate with words, but many which lie so deep that they lie beyond the realm of language. Things we feel so deeply. So prayers spoken and prayers unspoken we offer in the spirit of the living and loving Christ. And together God's people say, Amen. And before our closing hymn, I just want to re remind you uh, just to stay in your seats after the benediction until you're directed to leave by an usher. Uh, as you're able, please stand. We'll sing together a golden oldie, softly and tenderly.
struck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh and may it be contagious. May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit, and may it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go in peace full to the brim. Amen. I'm Hugh Donnelly, one of the ministers at Knox Waterloo. Thank you for being a part of the worshiping community today. You can find us online at knoxwaterloo.ca, and you are always welcome to call us at 519-886-4150. This broadcast is made possible by you, listeners and friends of Knox, who support Knox's broadcast ministry. Please consider making a donation in gratitude as you are able, and may the peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> 